Hello everyone, and welcome back to Train Simulator. Yes, if you've been following Armstrong Powerhouse's Facebook page, you'll know that they've been working on a, an enhancement pack for the Class 700, which was released today. And suffice to say, um, it's about time. Mind you, the train should have been in this sort of state when it was first released. Because if you, because I have covered the 700 and a couple of, I think, two previous videos, and, uh, You'll, and if you've seen those videos, you'll know that this thing is, well, in its default state, is, well, reminds me of the class three, the default class 303, where it's so bad it's undrivable. Somehow I managed to make two videos out of it, because logic. So anyway, yes, um, this pack, it was released this mo early, very early this morning, and because I thought that it would be useful for scenario making, I went and, I went and bought it. Uh, cost me about, I think, whatever the New Zealand equivalent of fifteen pounds is. It's um, either way. I'm hoping to get, certainly hoping to get my money's worth out of it. Um, you don't just get the seven hundred in the pack. You also get the the two liveries for the seven oh seven, namely Southwest Trains and Southeastern City Beam. Oh, hello, it's a sixty six. Um. As well as the as well as the class, or an, I think it's meant to be an AI only rendition of the class seven one seven. Because AP didn't model the or didn't model a new cab for the seven one seven for some reason. Yes, so the you do get some scenarios with this pack, but therefore the extended Chatham main line, which goes all the way down to like Ramsgate and Dover, which I don't have. Stations to random use, I'm aware of that. So, as a, because I haven't got that route, so I've decided I'd make this one scenario myself on the. It's, it's labelled as London Victoria plus St Pancras to Faversham 2016, and essentially what it, all it is. Okay, I'm a bit confused because I can hear this beeping. Okay. Anyway, now oh, what's the bit I've done something wrong? Oh no, I haven't. I incidentally, I um, have barely consulted the manual for this, but uh, hmm. and so in that case, I'm surprised I got this thing moving. Anyway, so we've just started out from Swanscombe on the North Kent line, and we're taking this service down to Raynham. This is a uh, Teams Link in real life do run 700s down the North Kent line, and they join the Chatham main line in Rochester and, go, and then go as far as Raynham. Of course, we're currently crossing High Speed One, and you can't really see it too well, but in the distance there is Epsfleet International. What is that beeping? Ah, okay. Whatever that beeping was, pressing the F key cancelled it. I always thought when you pressed F, it was to pay respects. Anyway, we're currently we're now arriving at North Fleet. From what I understand, in real life, Southeastern still operate services through here, but they generally the their services generally only go as far as Gravesend, whereas the 700s took over the one that goes all the way to Raynham. And as we, and as you'll see later, there's a bay platform at Raynham Station, which. There's a still, I suppose you could say it's a relatively recent addition. And yes, I know I'm screwing up the stopping point, but just shut up. <laughs> anyway, this is, um, as I say, North Fleet. One thing I did see in the manual for this enhancement pack is that you have to press the the T key as normal, but you also press either the U or O keys to open the doors. So I think U is for the left hand side and O is for the right hand side. I actually learnt that when I was driving the uh, Frankfurt U-Bahn, if anyone knows about that route. With the rolling stock that you get with it, you have to press the the U and O keys to open the doors, or, and then I to close them. Interesting noise. I always like these uh, sort of UFO motor noises from the Desiro units. Now I don't know too much about the 700s, but after seeing other people's videos 
and doing a bit of research on the default 700, the, the one I said earlier that was undrivable, I saw that, uh, well I learned that these trains have different motor sounds for the different power modes. Being Thameslink, being the Thameslink trains, the 700s can run on obviously 750 volt DC third rail, just about some pantograph there. North of Farringdon they run on 25 kilovolt AC overhead wires. And from what I understand they do sound different on on uh, overhead wires. Now from what I gather, the uh, this extended chatter mainline that Dovetail brought out, it does include Blackfriars, but from what I understand, they've never, I don't know if they actually bothered to ever link up that section, that missing section between Blackfriars and, uh, and St Pancras Thames Link, if anyone remembers that uh, London to Bedford route Dovetail brought out quite a few years ago. Uh, even now I still think that the that London to Bedford is one of the worst routes Dovetail have, made, have ever made, but that is just my opinion of course, and you can certainly have your say in the comments on what you think the worst route is, or even what's the best one, so that it's not all negative. Right, well I've hardly driven this, in this AP version of the 700, but already I can tell that it is a massive improvement over the horrible default 700. Um, and I say that mainly from the sounds, but as always, with, I mean, I'm not too experienced with AP's more recent products, but I do know that you generally get a lot more features, or certainly a lot more, yeah, a lot more features and sort of functionality than you do with the default products. Take the Hitachi IETs, for example. And uh, speaking of which, when that pack was first released, I put up a video where I was driving the Class 803 so the, the Lumo train from Newcastle to Darlington and if I remember to do so I'll put that video in the top right corner if you'd, if you'd get, or if you were so inclined as to have a look and so yeah the, aside from the 800 and 700 that we're seeing um, I generally I don't really generally don't buy AP's more recent products um, in some ways it's it's mainly a combination of personal preference and the fact that I generally don't use the, the modern UK traction and train simulator all that often. By the way, 395. Actually, speaking of which, uh, the default 700, for whatever reason, the AC sounds, or Dovetail nicked them from the 395. And I was just watching this video, I forget who, I already forget who the guy, who the uploader was. He pointed out like how can you, how can a, or words to the effect of like how can a Hitachi built train sound the same, or or how can a Desiro sound the same as a Hitachi train? Because of course the 700s are not Hitachi products, they were built in Germany by Siemens. This is the first time I've tried driving the Armstrong Powerhouse Enhanced 700, I should add, so I haven't yet experienced the uh, AP, uh, the, the AC sounds. And I've, a while ago I did write down notes to do a scenario on London to Bedford, so I might do that at some point, but it just depends on what I've got going on outside of Train Simulator. Right. One thing's for sure, I'm just noticing now there's a slightly different thing with the motors on this train that sound quite different from the likes of the well, older Desiros like the Class 450 for instance. Or well, guess even the 350. Anyway, um, I, must, I should also mention that this section that we're currently on and that we'll be on for the rest of the journey, but south of Gravesend, it also appears on the southeastern high speed route in Train Sim World 2. So in some ways it's kind of fascinating to be driving along the, essentially the predecessor to that TSW route. And as it stands now I've got no preference between either version. And although I will say that at least in Train Simulator we've got the 700, whereas for some reason this thing is totally absent from 
the TSW routes that would, where it would, it would make sense to have a 700, especially London, the London commuter route. Anyway, so, hello, there's, I think those are gasometers over there. Anyway, uh, trying to get a screenshot of this thing where, it, where it's on a super elevated curve, and, and we just missed that chance. Wonderful. The other thing I've just thought to mention about the Class 700s is that they are either, they come in either 8 or 12 car formations, and from what I gather, they, they only use the 8 car units on these services to and from Rainer. Hence why I've got an 8, an eight car unit for this scenario. And from what I saw on real-time trains, the server, the Teams Link service to and from Raynham, at least throughout the late morning or whatever time of day this is, what well, you can see, um, you can see what time of day it is. Uh, it was showing it as an hourly service, which is curious because I thought it was half hourly. Hmm. I forgot that you could open and shut the side window there. Which is curious because sometimes you'll get trains that don't have a working cab side window and then you get others like the 700 here that do have it. As I don't know why there's so, so much inconsistency there. Pretty soon we'll be passing through the freight yard at Hoot Junction and uh, before I say anything more, um, how accurate is that horn sound? If anyone who's more knowledgeable in the 700s is watching, please let us know below, because in all honesty I don't know that much about the real thing. But it is, it does definitely sound good, I'll give it that. I don't think what it sounds like, what the horn sounds like. Anyway, um, as I was about to say, whenever you pass through Ho Junction on, on the TSW version of this route, you'll, and if you've got the East Coastway route like I do, You'll see like e just EWS class 66s and JNA freight wagons stabled in the yard, and that's just that look is what I've gone for in this scenario. And um, the 66s that I've used are from AP's enhancement pack, like that GBRF one that we saw back at Swanscombe. Where the Mendip rail wagons that you'll see, those are, and as with the network rail ones that the GBRF engine was hauling, those are freeway reskins from DP Simulation. Is the 66s. I think I got one of these shots of a 66 for, T for a TSW video, where a 66 was in this siding, and I had a class 47 speeding past with Mark II coaches. I don't remember which video that was though. There's some more 66s. Speaking of which, I've actually got a uh, Hornby model of a Class 66, except it's not in GBRF colours, but ra not in EWS colours, but rather GBRF. And the specific engine is 66773 Pride of GB Rail Freight. If anyone knows what RLU8 means, <laughs> Comment below because I've got no idea. Although I assume the eight, the, or the number eight, is referring to the fact that we've got an eight-car consist, in which case it uh, wouldn't surprise me. And uh, as for RLU, hmm, not sure. Anyway, I've, no I've noticed that now that we're approaching Highham Station, and this section between Highham and Strood is one that, in all honesty, I really don't like because because it's just it's basically just two long tunnels for the majority of the section and it's not until you leave the second tunnel that you're anywhere near well that you, the second tunnel doesn't end until just at the start of a very sharp cur curve that you go around before coming into Strood station and uh, yeah I just don't particularly like that sort of thing, where there's a station very close to a long tunnel, and that's main, <laughs> come to think of it, those are the main reasons why I don't like stations like uh, Tunbridge Wells and St. Leonard's Warrior Square, which incidentally are on the same line. Well, not exactly, but uh, they're both served by Charing Cross to Hastings trains. 
Now I did see in the timetable that we are scheduled to essentially pass another Thames Link train here. Um, if anyone's actually been on the 700s in real life, uh, I'd, say, I'd be curious to know because uh, the closest I've ever got to England in real life is Melbourne in Australia. Yeah, I'm not obviously not as fortunate as I, was, as I would like to be. It's, um, I think I'll have to wait until the pandemic dies down before potentially saving up to go to England. So, overall, the first one of the first things I noticed about this enhancement pack is that the textures. It might just be me, or it might just be the way I'm seeing it, because the textures do look much nicer than they do on the on the default version. The one thing I noticed from this reviewer I was watching is that look at this, like this key, this thing for the door keyhole, at least I think that's what that is that's a 2D texture, a flat 2D texture and then you've got a proper modelled emergency door handle and that's, I'm not criticising Armstrong Powerhouse of course, but rather the original modelling although I do know that it was done, but the original model for the 700 was done by Master Key Simulations and they and then got released by DTG, just like the updated, yeah, the updated 444s and 450s with the extended Portsmouth Direct line. Incidentally, that is a route that um, I've never driven in its entirety, and I don't know when or if I'll ever, do, I'll ever cover that route properly. Well, again, because one time I think a very long time ago I did it, recorded a run from Hampton Court to London Waterloo with a 455. It was the default 455 that comes with the route where it's got awful physics and sounds. And from what I gather even uh, AP's 455 enhancement pack is not that much better. I mean in terms of sounds of course it is a lot nicer. But, uh, there's other aspects of the 455 EP besides the sounds that I don't particularly like. I mean I've seen I think just one watching of what is it? I think it was Yowie's video on the 455 EP is enough to is enough for me to be concerned, shall, I, shall we say? And in all honesty, my opinions on Armstrong Powerhouse and how good they are with making add-ons and things is very mixed. I don't want to say, I don't really want to say any more. In all honesty, because I know that they've got a large number of how should, well devoted fans on board, with the world trying to be as respectful as they can, and I don't want and I don't want to get them angry. In all honesty, yeah, this is what I was on about with these really long and boring tunnels. So, if anything, they remind me of the section of the North Island main trunk between Wellington and Takapu Road, um, the, the, the latter being the first station out of Wellington. That section, you, you go out of, you go out from the main station, which has like nine platforms. Then you go through uh, fairly sizable yards on each side. One's for the EMUs, the others for Kiwi Rail, and then you end up going up on this bridge that acts as a flyover, going on the up. Or going over the northbound Hutt Valley line and you then end up going through two insanely long tunnels I forget exactly how long they are but I think they're some of the they're definitely some of the longest railway tunnels in the country although saying that they're nowhere near as long as the likes of Otiedra or Kaimai or Rimotaka tunnels because those are all about eight kilometers and I don't think I don't think these ones near Welling these long ones near Wellington are And yeah, this is what I was on about with that really sharp curve coming into Strood, where you're restricted to 15 miles an hour. And you get a lot of flange squeal and all. Hmm. I'm not really sure what to make of that horn sound now. As I, as I said earlier, it is better than the default one, but hearing it like this, 
with minimal track noise. Um, it something about it doesn't sound doesn't sound right. Especially this, especially the B tone. Oh well, at least overall the sounds are quite good. One rem one thing I remember hearing about a lot of people have said about with AP's enhancement packs is that a lot of the sounds are too quiet and I haven't noticed any of that sort of thing so far as opposed to I haven't noticed any of that sort of thing uh, couch I realize that that's an, a dreadful pun so I'll try to move on anyway here we are at Strood which I used to think was pronounced as Stroud but that's apparently a town in Gloucestershire and, sp and that one's spelt S-T-R-O-U-D. Anyway, this is a, this station, of course, is primarily served by the Thames Link and South Eastern High Speed trains, which is kind of ironic because you're not going fast on this section at all. Anyway, there's some 465s on their way to London, Victoria. So yeah, you've got immediate. If you went, if we went straight ahead, we'd go on down the Midway Valley line towards Paddock Wood and Tunbridge. But of course, in this case, well, Thameslink doesn't run on the Medway Valley line. It's only only Southeastern and the occasional freight train. I should add that all the networkers that you've seen in this video, like the the 466 and 465 we saw at Gravesend, and these two, they're from they're from the four, AP's 465 or and 466 Volume Two Enhancement Pack. So I decided I'd buy that one along with the 700. Anyway, I'll, I'll get moving again, and from here on, it's a pretty slow crawl to Gillingham. I think we can get up, to, get a little bit faster before we'll have to go through the crossovers in order to get to the bay platform at Raynham. And on a personal note, this original uh, London to Faversham high-speed route, which we're basically driving on for this entire run, uh, it it's quite significant to me because I started playing Train Simulator in December 2013 and back then it was called TS2014 and one of the routes that was in that default pack was Southeastern High Speed and in fact I quite recently might have well it probably would have been about a month or two ago I did a video where I was essentially revisiting all three of the default add-ons from that TS2014 package the others were Donna Pass for the USA and Hamburg to Hanover for Germany. And if I remember, I'll put a link to that video in the top right corner. I usually, I always end up forgetting, though. Partly because I've got a lot of other stuff on my mind. Anyway, now we're crossing the River Medway. I seem to recall is actually meant to have quite a distinctive dum 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 noise when the train's going across. Hello, there's a this. That looks like a submarine over there. Because it is a submarine. I know that they've got one in the Midway in real life, but other than that, I know almost nothing about it. Right. One other thing about the original London to Faversham High Speed is that that was, I believe it was set in like 2012 or 2013. And included the included Gravesend as it was before the track layout was extensively modified, and the old Rochester station. This one we're arriving at now is of course the new Rochester station, and there's another 395. In fact, we'll actually we'll later on we'll be going through the deserted platforms of the old Rochester station, and I quite like how in Train Simulator you've got both the old and new versions of this St Pancras to Faversham route because then you can directly compare how how much this little section between Strood and Chatham has changed s s since 2012 at least the good thing with that is that you can you've got the different versions of the route that you can use for like you can use the old version for say scenarios in the network southeast era and the modern one of course for modern southeastern scenarios, or in this case, Thameslink. Now, unlike, again, like people like Yowie, I don't think I'll 
be making a proper edited review of the Desirous City EP, especially since I'd probably do a rather probably end up doing a pretty poor job of it. Um, I might the keyword being might look at the 707 as well, or as well as the 700, but no promises, mind. And I won't be making a video where I drive the 7 the 717 because. If you know what the 717 looks like, uh, and even just the cab interior, you'll know that AP were quite lazy and not bothering to model a new front, or a new cab interior for the 717. Though, from what I gather, they did model the front, yeah, they remodeled the front of the 700 to look like a 717, which is distinctly different from the 700 and 707. And that's because the 717s are fitted with it's sort of like a retractable emergency escape door and ladder. It's like, it's say retractable and fold, fold up, folds up into the front of the, into the cab vestibule. Um, the reason why they've got that emergency evacuation set up is because the 717s are designed to run on the Northern City Line, south the uh, that really strange underground line between Drayton Park and Moorgate they took over from the class 313s which had been running the the line since 1976 and they the the last of the original 313s were retired in 2019 though southern are still using some refurbished ex silverlink units on the east on the east coastway and uh, as for the original Northern City Line, uh, it certainly looks quite different these days, but I dare say the regular commuters would be quite relieved. Incidentally, the 313s, they also had a sort of a door in the cab vestibule that could be, I think, would have been there to you so they could use it as in, if they needed to evacuate, evacuate the train in an emergency. But yeah, the vast majority of trains in the UK don't have that sort of feature. So I'd imagine that the, even though I haven't really, I'm not that familiar with the layout of the 717, I imagine that the cab cab would look somewhat like the 700, but but it would be kind of altered to sort of look like, well, to be the same sort of space and size as like the cab on say a class 387. Um, speaking of which, I know some people don't like the 387s. But in all honesty, I I do like the three eight sevens. Sure, they 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 don't look too different from the other Electro Stars, but I don't know why. There's just something about the three eight sevens that I like. Um, it's mainly from experience with the Gatwick Express three eight seven and TSW two. And yeah, I can certainly understand. I I despite the fact that I quite like the three eight sevens myself, I certainly understand why some people or why people wouldn't like them it's um considering how boring they can certainly seem and i suppose you could say widespread um even though i think the gatwick, gatwick express i don't even know if that's running any, uh, at the moment because i think some of the i think this, this gatwick and c2c 387s weren't they all loaned or hired by Great Western Railway to cover for uh, the the Hitachi 800s and 802s being out of action. Pretty sure that's what what happened. So you could replicate that sort of working on part on like the Western Main Line's route. Although I think that de that route depicts the Great Western Main Line before electrification was extended past ha Airport Junction and all the way to Cardiff. And that's the other thing is if if anyone remembers the South Wales coastal routes that Dovetail brought out, I would have been. Um, oh, how long ago was it? I remember I got the route after going to see my like, grandma in hospital. I think it was sometime around 2016, and that is now a very outdated route because of the fact that that whole section to from London to Cardiff is now electrified. 
and seeing modern pictures of Cardiff Central, I just can't... It just looks so weird to me, considering that I was so much more familiar with the layer, with the station before the wire, as it was before the wires came along. But, oh well, it's the way it is, I suppose. Just thinking back to the uh, Class 700 here, one of the good things about this unit, especially now that it's been made a lot better with thanks to Armstrong Powerhouse, is it is quite useful on quite a few different routes. Although I think for the sake of your sanity I'll only list about I'll only list two examples. We've got South London Network and the previously mentioned Midland Mainline London to Bedford. Although saying well, I suppose you could also use it on like East Coast Mainline London to Peterborough, although that route now is pretty outdated because I think there was a isn't there now I'm pretty sure there's now a big flyover at Hitchin and there's, uh, the, there's the tunnels, I think, what are they called? The canal tunnels uh, that have, were reopened to provide that direct link between the East Coast Main Line and the Thames Link core. Because when Dovetail made the. Uh, the What is it? Yeah. <sighs> Sorry. So, forgetting my words mixed up. It does happen sometimes. Um, so, yeah, when Dovetail made the ECML South and. Midland Main Line to Bedford. Uh, that was long before those major um, additions and improvements to the Thames Link service were in, put in. These days, you can these days you'll see Class 700s running direct services between Peterborough and like between Peterborough and Cambridge. Well, no, from either Peterborough or Cambridge down through the Thames Link core and onto Brighton or Horsham, which. I just can't quite, I can't quite believe that sort of thing's possible these days. Because I don't think you would have been able to do it in the Steam era. Now one thing I've noticed is that for the life of me, I have not been able to get the headlights working properly. Oh. God, I'm stupid. Hang about. Okay, I'm confused. I don't know what the lights are meant to look like on the real thing, but it's probably useless trying to work it out because I'll just end up conf getting myself even more confused. Right, well this is, this is of course Gillingham, and that only means one thing, aside from the fact that we're at a station with three platforms. It also means that this is our second to last stop, so pretty soon we'll be getting to Raynham. <laughs> I just had an idea for something to try and do with a horn. Yes, it's one of the Funky Town engines. Well, uh, not engines, units. And by that I mean I can... You can play that iconic riff of that from the Lip, Lips, Lips Inc. song, Funky Town, on the train's horn, thus. Although in the actual song it's a lot more fast-paced than that. Anyway, so, I'll tell you what, this crossing just outside the station, that reminds me of the one, I think it's near South Acton, on the North London line, where there's a, in Train Simulator at least, it shows a post on the, a sign on the signal box that's still in, like, Network South East labels. And here's, the, and before I mention anything else, here is the 707. These things were originally built for Southwest trains, and later, oh, but Southwest and Railway decided to get rid of them in favour of the Class 701 of Entras, and Southeastern are taking up, or have taken delivery of the surplus 707s, which is good. I mean, it would be absolutely criminal to let such young trains go for scrap. But the these 707s, I should add, uh, they are, as you can tell, they look very similar to the 700s, but the 707s are only five car units. And they're not, their services are not anywhere near as, I uh, wouldn't say intense, but they're certainly very, very different from the Thames Link system. And in some ways, I like how these units look so much like each other, despite being very different. And of course, you can't have the 717 here, because they're, 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 out, they're up in North London, 
running from Moorgate to like Welling Garden City and onto the Hartford Loop. Now one thing's for sure is that I, can, I mean I can see the speed limit has gone up to 90 but I don't think it'd be, I'm not sure if it'd be worth trying to get up to that speed. Because as you can see on the HUD, just there, uh, we've got the 25 mile an hour speed limit. And I thought it would be 15, but either way, it certainly makes sense to slow down since we'll have to go through the crossovers. Actually, something else I've just noticed that's been curious this whole time. Considering that other AP packs, although I don't know if it's enhancement packs or just... Uh, or just the rolling stock packs that they've done. This thing hasn't got working GSMR. Which I think is a f thing with... that's not AP's fault. That is something to do with the... I think the way the original 700 was scripted. Uh, but please correct me if I'm wrong. But I know that other AP products like the Class 150 Stroke 2 and I think also the 319 those have definitely got working G that that lot has definitely got working GSMR. Oh, and also the 313s, 314s, and 315s. Speaking of units based off the 313, I wouldn't mind seeing a Mersey Rail route eventually. Because then you could have the class 507s and 508s. Or, if there's something funny about you, a 777. <laughs> I think I should have started slowing down a bit sooner. <laughs> I should probably be taking a breather, considering how long I've been blabbering. And that's why there's this awkward silence. Actually, that's another good screenshot opportunity, is uh, getting a shot of such a long train snaking through the crossover. Of course, this would look even more impressive if it was a 12-car unit. Now one thing I've realised I've completely forgotten to mention this whole time is the passenger view. Which, I don't know, I don't know how different this, I don't remember what the original was like, but what the, what we've got here it doesn't look too bad. I think the textures have certainly been overhauled, especially for that uh, display screen above the doors. Hello, I didn't notice you could go to this view as well. Uh, okay, so is this the front of the unit? It is. I remember in some of Jeff Marshall's videos, he said that sometimes, I forget what the circumstances are, but sometimes you can get declassified first class on one of these 700s. So you can, so if you, they'll still run with the first class section of course, but it'll be, de it'll be declassified so you wouldn't need to pay for a first class ticket. But the, th the other, th the main thing I was going to say was that was this major update to the texture for the destination screen because I believe this is how it is on the real 700s where they have details for or they'll give you passengers updates on like the line on how well the London Underground is running and of course it's also got mention of uh, Crossrail, Docklands Light Railway, the Overground and the Croydon Tramlink but oh, I could have stopped a bit sooner <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, this uh, we've now made it to Raynham, and this is it for our run with the Class 700. First, well, technically my third time driving a 700 in Train Simulator, but my first run with the AP Enhancement Pack. And yeah, I really do hope that you've enjoyed this, despite my <laughs> somewhat awkward and nonsensical commentary. And if if you like, I should add that I'm not sponsored, by the way. But if you would, I'll leave a link to this EP in the description so you can go and potentially get it for yourself. And yeah, now that those messages have come up, I think I'll go ahead and end the video here. So yeah, not sure what else to say. So yeah, take care everyone and I'll see you next time.